What's up guys, TechLab here. Now in today's video, we're going to be revisiting a Linux site, but this time we're going to be using an all Intel gaming PC. As we've seen in the past with other types of hardware, Linux site just tends to work. But is that the case when it comes to an Intel system? Well, today we're going to find out. Now, of course, for today's video, we will need an all Intel gaming PC. And here is one I built earlier. I need to send a special thanks out to our friends at DeepCool for providing some of this system. For the case, they provided us their latest CH160 Plus. That is a micro ATX version of their quite famous now ITX case. It is just slightly bigger than the original, but it does actually contain all of the same aesthetics and a super compact size. They also provided us with an 850 watt power supply. That is the PN850M. It's actually a pretty decent power supply. It is gold rating and it comes with a fully modular system so we can keep the cables down. And they also provided us with three of their latest ARGB fans. Now, unfortunately for this system, we've only included one this time and we haven't actually enabled the RGB, but I'm sure in the future you will actually see those again. So a big thank you to Decal for sending that kind of stuff out. But more importantly is what is inside the system. Now the components inside of here is some of the stuff that you guys have actually recommended I build for a very long time now. So at least we're finally gonna get to see that. For the CPU, we have the Intel Core i5 14400F. Now that is actually a pretty decent CPU from Intel's 14th generation. It comes with 10 cores, which is 6P cores and 4E cores. And it also comes with 16 threads. So it's actually a pretty beefy CPU, particularly for the price that you will pay. Now, considering it is an LGA 1700 CPU, you will only pay roughly around 100 pounds for that kind of CPU. And they still offer pretty decent performance too. So definitely something somebody should check out if they are on a bit of a budget and they want to put a system together. Another great thing about those CPUs is of course that they will support both DDR5 and DDR4, depending on the motherboard that you use. We are using a very basic motherboard in this one. It is a very basic H610, which is not the greatest motherboards out there, but they will get the job done. And this one in particular does support DDR4. For the RAM, we've got 32 gigabytes of Crucial Pro DDR4 RAM. It is only running at 3200 megahertz, but it is in two sticks of 16 gigabytes. So we've got that dual channel speeds there. Then when it comes to storage, we have gone for a P5 generation four Crucial Drive that is an NVMe. So it's running extremely fast from the motherboard itself. That's actually gonna give this system a decent enough boost. And then when it comes to the most important thing of any gaming PC, we've got the graphics card. And for that, we've got the Intel Arc B580 12 gigabytes LE. Now I absolutely love this graphics card and when running under Windows it is absolutely fantastic. It will provide you all the performance you need for pretty much most games. So overall the system is pretty decent. When you guys actually asked me to build something like this it probably would have been classed as mid-range although nowadays it's probably more like entry level stuff. The one thing that I really love about this system is of course the cooler. We have used one of Intel's stock high-end coolers here. It's just something that I picked up a while ago and I thought it would look absolutely fantastic in this system. It does support RGB lighting as well as a nice little glowing up Intel label in there. It is more than efficient for this CPU because they were technically designed for things like i9s and stuff. So that is actually pretty cool to see. And then the best feature of this entire build, in my opinion, outside of the hardware that we've used, is the fact that the case from DeepCool comes with a handle. That actually makes it really simple to, for me to be able to kind of carry this system around the studio and stuff. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping this case uh, going forward so that we can actually do more builds in it. Now, of course, being basically an entry-level gaming PC, we're not gonna be able to push this system too far, but we are gonna be able to test for things like compatibility. Can we actually play the types of games that I play on an all Intel system using something like Linux Bezite? It should work, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, so we've got the system all hooked up and it's all running perfectly fine. Everything booted up. It was very simple to install Linux Bazaar on this system. It was exactly the same as any other system that I've tried it on. It's all very user friendly. You just click a few buttons and eventually set a password and you can log in. Steam is already pre-installed, so we've logged into that and we've downloaded a few games. The system is running beautifully fine at the moment. It is nice and quiet. Everything was found in terms of drivers. I didn't have to install anything separately. And yeah, I'd just really like to show off the little cooler here from Intel. I can't remember the actual name for this cooler, but I think it does look really awesome. It's got the nice little light up Intel logo in the middle and it does have RGB lighting, but I haven't actually plugged it into any kind of controller. So we've got this nice blue glow here. But anyway, 
When it comes to gaming, of course, on a Linux-based system, we can't play any of the games that use things like kernel-level anti-cheats. So if you are somebody that plays them things, this is not really for you. But for everybody else that's not bothered about the latest Call of Duty, mostly multiplayer games, or the latest battlefields, things like that, Linux could be a great alternative. Well, we hope so anyway, particularly on an Intel system. We know for a fact that the games that we're testing today run beautifully fine on a Linux Bazite system using an AMD graphics card or even an Nvidia one. So I'm really hoping that Intel can pull it out the bag here. Now, when it comes to gaming, we can't test too many games here. And like I say, there are games that will simply not work on it, but I thought the best and the most fair way of actually checking out the compatibility is playing three games that I recently played all the way through. So these are my types of games. If it can actually play these things, then it would actually work really well for me and somebody like me. So the first game that we're going to be testing is Dead Island 2. Absolutely love this title. I waited years and years for it and it eventually came out. Like I said before, I've touched nothing else on this system. We've simply installed, we let it do its own drivers and things like that and we logged into Steam and I installed the game. So all we need to do is click play and see what happens. Now it did take a few minutes for the game to actually start. I don't know why it's just a little bit slow at startup. If you are running these games on Linux Mosaic for the first time, you will generally go through the shader caching and stuff like that. Um, that can take a little bit long, but not too long. Depends on the CPU that you've got more than anything, but we'll skip through some of this menu here. Unfortunately, this game after this point is also going to uh, compile all the shader caching again. So it's going to do it again. But as you can see on the 14400F, it's actually running very quickly. It's only going to take a few seconds for this to complete and we should then be into the game. In this menu system at the moment, we're getting around 213 frames per second. So performance is not the key issue here. It's more around compatibility and it's actually running fine at this moment. So we'll head over to the options before we go into game and we'll just double check what we've got configured. We're currently running in 1080p and we're gonna restrict it to 1080p today because we're gonna be capturing in 1080p anyway. It is a entry level system, as we said before. So 1080p is probably where you're gonna aim, although you could probably get away with 1440p on most of these games. But anyway, let's go over to advanced. So it's currently set to a medium setting. I'm gonna increase that to high because this graphics card should be able to cope quite well. And we're gonna turn off AMD's FX super resolution because I don't think we need that at the moment. It is an option though. If you do have an Intel Art graphics card, you can pretty much use FSR on any graphics card. And if this game did have access to XESS, which is Intel's version of it, you could actually use that as well on Linux. It's perfectly fine. So we'll go back, we'll save these changes, and then we'll just jump straight into a game. Actually loading into a game takes a couple of seconds. It didn't really take long at all. And we've now loaded up. We are currently getting an average of around 72 frames per second. There's no stuttering. The game started perfectly fine. We're nice and smooth at the moment. It's actually a Pretty decent smooth performance here so far. I was expecting it to be a little bit more jerky because this game can be a little bit funny sometimes. It has an issue really when it comes to the 1% lows because for some reason you always get about half the 1% low performance than your average, but and, and, and sometimes you can actually feel that in the actual gameplay itself, depending on the system you're using. But so far, no, this is actually quite smooth. We had a little bit of a blip there, but nothing that actually takes away from the gameplay and I bet if we actually lock this down with V-Sync it would probably be a little bit smoother so let's do that now V-Sync should actually lock this down to around 60 FPS which is again more than efficient for me and probably perfectly fine for most people out there but let's set that set in hopefully we can get it a little bit smoother once it's locked now we are locked at 60 frames per second it is bobbing up and down from around 59 to 60 now and again but overall it's actually pretty smooth i'm actually quite impressed so far this does mean that i could play dead island 2 on a all intel system using linux Bazite. and like i say i didn't have to hack or do anything to get this working so now that we know that this game works and we can actually get away with playing it let's try the next game now another favorite game of mine from recent times is atom fall i don't know why because this game is actually not one that i would generally play if you looked it up but I did purchase it and I did give it a go because it's based in the UK and why wouldn't you do that if you could? As I said before, you will sometimes fall into this. This is probably the first time that I've started out and fall on this system and it's now processing the Vulcan shaders. This sometimes takes a little bit of time, particularly on a Linux system. So you will have to wait for it, although you, you could skip it, but then you, you run into problems where you could have stuttering in the game. So we're going to wait for this to actually continue. It's a little bit slow. Again, it depends on the CPU that you've got. We've got an entry level CPU, 
it's going to take a little bit of time but yeah let's wait for this to finish and then hopefully the game will start so we finished caching the vulcan shaders and i will admit it took about five minutes for this to happen on the system it is probably one of the biggest pains of a linux based system but as long as you've got a little bit of patience you can actually go through it fine you could hit skip on that kind of thing if you really want to and kind of put up with it in game because it's going to do it in the background but atom full menu at least has started We'll go over to the settings and see what we've got configured on this one. We're going to enable VSync straight away on this one. So we're going to limit the frames that we're going to push out. We are running in 1080p and for graphics, we can just turn this thing all the way up. So we're going to leave it on a high setting. It looks very nice at high anyway. So let's save those settings and play the game. Hopefully this starts and it looks like it's starting very quickly at the moment. We've gone to a black screen. We'll give it a few seconds and there we go. The actual uh, loading screen has come up. We'll just see if we can skip through this. Sometimes you can't skip through them because it's actually doing loading in the background. But yeah, so far everything looks fine. I think I've just accidentally hit continue. So hopefully we'll be straight into game in no time and we'll see what the performance is. Now, again, performance isn't the most important thing here. It was just the fact that the game would start and that we could play it. And it is. We're playing perfectly fine. The game looks beautiful. We're reasonably smooth on our frame time graph. Nothing is going wrong here. We are getting the 60 frames per second that we've limited the system to. I'm pretty sure that this game would probably be getting around 200 if we turned off VSync because it doesn't, really doesn't require that much hardware at all. Maybe we'll actually try that, but I'm gonna outrun these rats first before they kill me. Let's go and get to a safe place first. There are no graphical issues using Linux Bazite here. Everything does look perfectly fine. It looks as it does on a Windows system. So let's head over to the options now that I've got to a safe place. We'll go over to display and we're going to disable VSync just for now. We'll see if that actually causes us any issues. I don't think it will. I think it's going to be perfectly fine. So let's continue on with the game. So we are getting around 130 frames per second now. It's peaking at around 132. Again, performance is not the most important thing here, just compatibility and stability. And so far that all looks perfectly fine. I could definitely play this game all the way through. And I think that I will replay it again at some point because I missed so much of it going through. It is a bit of an open world game, but it's section to section. So there's lots of extra things that you can do, little side quests, side missions. I'm pretty sure when I played this originally, I kind of just rushed through it really on the main stories because it was so exciting to just figure out what was going on and what happened. And there's also alternative routes that you can take. So I probably took one path. Next time I'll probably take another. But yeah, so far this game runs beautifully fine. It's definitely another win here for Linux Bazite and an all Intel system. I'm actually quite impressed with the way it's going so far. For the next game, it is going to be Ready or Not. Now, this is another game that I wouldn't generally play, to be honest, but my son has been playing this game and he's been having so much fun with it. He really wanted me to go into co-op with him. I purchased it. I downloaded it. I ran it on my Windows based system. It run beautifully fine and I was hooked. I absolutely love playing this game and I repeatedly play the different missions over and over again, trying to get a better score. It's not something that I usually do, and I'm really hoping that this will start on a Linux Bazite system with an Intel Arc graphics card. I'm gonna start it in DirectX 12 mode because that should run perfectly fine. And if it does run, I'm gonna be really impressed because this game is, is kind of quirky too. It's not like the easiest game to run. So. We went straight into the menu system here. It didn't have to load any kind of pre-caches or anything like that. It's gone straight in. It's loading up very quickly. I can't really see any issues so far. And we've got to the menu system already. This is absolutely brilliant. I'm going to hit uh, continue at the moment. No, I'm going to go to single player and I'm going to go to a quick play. There are many different types of game types on this one. Generally, I've played it all through on co-op with my son. So I've got lots of missions that aren't unlocked to me in a single player game. But... Here we are in the actual police station. Took a few minutes for the assets to load, which is probably a, a, a Linux based issue because I'm not sure I remember that under Windows, but we can actually wander around the police station here and see what we can get up to. There is a firing range downstairs, so we'll go down there. The one thing that really annoys me in this game is how slow you walk, but then that's done on purpose really because you're supposed to be a, a more tactical based shooter. We'll go into the firing range here though. Everything looks beautiful. Lighting looks beautiful. There's a slight mist on the screen, but that's there in terms of the game's kind of artistic styling more than anything. And But so far, everything's running really, really smooth. We're getting an average at the moment of around 64 frames per second. The graphics card's being fully utilized. 
everything is very sharp it's very smooth we've got very good reaction times on the mouse and keyboard so absolutely no issues here with ready or not if you are somebody that actually does like this game you can definitely get away with playing it on a linux bezite system with an interlock graphics card i'm kind of guessing that performance could be a little bit better particularly with the b580 graphics card that we've got um, but i've never actually tested this one with a windows based system and this graphics card so i don't fully 100 percent know where it would land but this is more than playable you can definitely get away with it so there we go let me know in the comments below what you think of an intel system with linux bazite do you have one and are you having just as much success as me like i said before i'm not going to promise that every single game works and i can't promise that even if it was um, windows to be honest because the interlock graphics cards can be a little bit funny sometimes with uh, different types of games i can't even guarantee that uh even if this system was an AMD or Nvidia with Linux Bazite, that it would play every game. But for me, it's going to play most of the games, if not all of the games that I actually play. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. I'm sure we're going to be revisiting Linux Bazite and definitely Intel based systems again, or full all Intel based systems again. I'm also going to be trying out some different types of Linux distributions. We've already tried things like Linux Mint on the channel with the Steam basically installed and that works beautifully fine. We've tried Linux Bazite a few times now and that works perfectly fine, particularly for our needs. And I think some people have recommended Kashi OS. Never used it before, but I think I might give that one a go. So again, definitely subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that. And I'm sure as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.